Welcome to Mrs. Gray's Geometry Videos. Today we are going to take a look at three special parallelograms, which is part of Lesson 6.4. But before we begin, let's do a brief review of the properties of parallelograms because we are going to use that word parallelogram in every one of our descriptions. So the first property is that opposite sides are congruent. So the top and bottom sides would each have the same length or the same measurement. And these sides that are across from each other over here would also have the same measurement. Opposite sides are parallel. So the top is parallel to the bottom. And this side is parallel to this side. Consecutive angles are supplementary. and as we've gone over many, many times, supplementary means that we have two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So if this top angle here had a measurement of 110 degrees, then this one would have a measurement of 70 degrees because 110 and 70 add up to 180 degrees. And consecutive means that they are on the same side of the line. And then if we were to look at this top side, um, these two right here would also add up to 180 degrees. And if we were to go this way, these add, add up to 180 degrees. So no matter which way we go, these angles that are along each side length add up to 180 degrees. The opposite angles are congruent, and hopefully you can clearly see that from this diagram. So the 70 is just straight across from the other angle that equals 70 degrees. And the diagonals bisect each other, and again, this is the one that everyone always seems to forget, so make sure that you take a special note of that. And what that means is that from this point of intersection right here, that this segment right here would be congruent to this segment here. And from this point of intersection here, this segment would be congruent to this segment over here. So that's a brief review of the properties of parallelograms. The first special parallelogram that we are going to look at is a rhombus, and sometimes I call it a tilted square. It is a parallelogram, so that means that everything we discussed earlier, the rhombus has. But in addition to all of those properties, it also has some that make it unique. The rhombus has four congruent sides. That's why I call it a tilted square. And the diagonals are perpendicular, which means that from this point of intersection right here, it creates four right angles. So this would be 90 degrees. And I didn't show this symbol here, but this would be 90 degrees, this would be 90 degrees, and this would be 90 degrees. All of these angles would be 90 degrees. And it, take a special note of that because we are going to use the fact that this is 90 degrees to do the Pythagorean theorem. So you can see that we have a triangle right here. Um, that's, again, we are um, setting ourselves up to do the Pythagorean theorem. The diagonals are not congruent. And what I'm going to do is actually take this diagonal and move it out of the rhombus. And I'm going to take this one and move it out. Because when they are outside the rhombus, uh, you can clearly see that they definitely do not have the same measurement. Because this, I, I kind of like to say that it's stretched out. This diagonal here is always going to be longer than this one. So the diagonals are not congruent. And the next special parallelogram is a rectangle. It, again, is a parallelogram, so all the properties that the parallelogram has, it has as well. It has four right angles, and that you guys should already know. The diagonals are congruent. That means each diagonal has the same length. And the diagonals are not perpendicular. This is not a property, but I just want you to take note of this. If you look here, you can clearly see that this is an obtuse angle. This one is acute. These do not form 90 degree angles. And then the last special parallelogram that we are going to look at is a square. And again, it has all the properties that a parallelogram has. 
And in addition to those properties, it also has four right angles. The diagonals are congruent. And the diagonals are perpendicular. So that means from this point right here that um, we would have four 90 degree angles. So this would be 90 degrees, this here would be 90 degrees, this would be 90 degrees, and this would be 90 degrees. And again, this is important because we are setting ourselves up to do the Pythagorean theorem. And then, of course, a square has four congruent sides.